39 weeks pregnant, woohoo! Anyway, welcome to Rock of the Week. I don't know how many of these I've done. Baby brain, you know. Just playing baby brain. brain. <laughs> this week's rock is this bad boy here that's sitting next to me, so I'm not going to try and attempt to throw that. It's probably the same size of the baby that I'm carrying right now. I mean, we can test that theory once it comes out. But basically, this is this week's rock. It's known as Amphibolite. It's very dark in colour and it's a metamorphic rock. So we get to talk about my favourite kind of rocks, the metamorphic ones. Now, let's go back to basics and talk about metamorphism for a minute. Right? Because you need to understand metamorphism to know what a metamorphic rock is. Now, metamorphism, it's in the name, it means change. Right? So rocks can change over geological time and they're put under pressures, high pressures, high temperatures, or low pressures, low temperatures, right? Over millions of years. This can happen, like, over a vast amount of time, or it can happen, you know, over a few million years, right? Okay. And there's two types of metamorphism, to keep it basic. There is regional metamorphism, and there is contact metamorphism. So... Contact metamorphism is when you basically just have heat involved. And contact metamorphism is usually associated with the magma chamber in the crust. So when we draw it, one, contact. This is our surface, right? Doesn't really need to be anything fancy. You could make it a mountain, but we're not gonna in this case. And we've got like a a magma chamber here. So obviously this magma chamber is molten, crystal mush. Some of it might have been crystallised already, other parts of it still quite molten, right? It can vary in composition, it can be a granitic magma chamber, it can be a, a gabbro magma chamber, there's different types of magmas that we'll go into detail in a, another video. And also that's fed up, you know, from like the mantle, like or wherever, if it's partially melted the crust, right? So, for instance, you've got layers of sedimentary rock in here, right? So you've got maybe like a shale, or you've got like a, a sandstone, or you've got a limestone, right? What's going to happen is the heat from this magma chamber it radiates out, it's going to change the composition of these rocks over geological time. So you get what's known as a metamorphic oil forming around this hot magma chamber. So contact is always just heat associated with metamorphism. And what happens is a sandstone turns into, uh, I don't know if I'll be able to, this in, a quartzite. A shale turns into um, a phyllite or a, you know, it goes, uh, not a phyllite, sorry, that's a regional metamorphism. A shale will turn into a horn fell, which is a very hard, flaky kind of, not flaky, very hard, like metamorphosed shale, contact metamorphosed shale, and a limestone will eventually turn into marble, right? So that's contact metamorphism related to heat. You then have regional metamorphism, which again we spoke about before. And regional metamorphism is when you have a mountain building event. So regional. And that usually happens when you have a convergent plate boundary, which we've also spoke about before and it's heat and pressure right because there's going to be a lot of heat and pressure involved in a convergent plate boundary so for instance we've got our subducting plate it might have been carrying a, another continent with it right 
So this is oceanic crust, very dense, gonna go under the continental crust, right? And this is moving that way, that's moving this way. Eventually, as these move together, this ocean closes and you get what's like, you know, known as like the, the whole crust basically coming together. The subducting plate's gone and recycled itself, right? You get all these thrust faults start to form where you get older rocks thrust on top of younger ones in here, obviously. These rocks that were maybe originally horizontal end up foliated, like as these like are coming together, this is driven by slab pull down and like a long mantle convection, it rises up elsewhere. This is a mantle underneath it. This is a lithosphere. The lithosphere is the hard part of like the crust. It's made up of oceanic crust and continental crust. Oceanic crust is a lot thinner and denser and continental crust is a lot thicker, right? So eventually when these two plates like, or these two continents collide with each other, it's going to thicken. You get uplift, you get mountains forming. Think about the Indian plate that's just collided with the Asian Eurasian plate, right? That's like kind of moved its way north over the last 65 million years. Like it came from just South Africa and it's moved its way up and it's collided with Asia and it's formed these mountains that we can see today called the Himalayas. So that's what these are. Sometimes you get partial melting of like the, the crust, partial melting of the mantle, it moves up, forms these granite like blobs and you get a little bit of associated contact metamorphism in there too. So there's like a lot going on. You get contact metamorphism and regional metamorphism, but usually the regional metamorphism will overprint the contact metamorphism. So when you do have regional metamorphism, we spoke about it when we did our slate video. You get different sequences of rocks that form from different compositions. It just all varies depending on what your original composition of that rock is, depending on what the protolith of that rock is. And you get different grades of metamorphism as well. You can have low grade metamorphism, which is usually rocks that are very fine grained still. They will only be at pressures and temperatures that are quite low, maybe 300 degrees Celsius sitting in that crust, you get like um, medium grade metamorphism, which is where the crystals are a little bit bigger and um, they've had time to grow. There's been chemical reactions happening like over geological time. And then you get high grade metamorphism, which is your high, high temperatures, like probably stuff under over, sorry, 600 degrees, 700 degrees Celsius. And when it comes to the regional metamorphism as well as contact metamorphism, you get different minerals that form too, like that are associated with both these separate, like different metamorphisms. So when you get a regional metamorphic rock, you get index minerals associated with, depending on how deep you are in the crust. So for instance, this is a mountain bell. Usually like the first kind of ones to, to form are like colite, there's biotite, which is around 350, I think. I might be a little bit off, like in my degrees and stuff like that. The muscovite as well is allowed to grow. If it's a schist, if it used to be a mudstone, you'll get your mica minerals growing and aligning. They all kind of align a certain way, forming what's known as a cleavage. It's the same with any other rock that you put in a regional metamorphic position. Like it's going to all the minerals are going to align and that's how you know it's been affected by regional metamorphism, right? And what's the next one in the sequence? Is it garnet? I can't even remember. I feel like I'm forgetting one. <laughs> you get garnet, you get stodolite, you get selenite. Can you spell stodolite? Selenite, I think I'm missing one. Kyanite goes in there somewhere. And these all form like at, you know, five, six hundred degrees, seven hundred degrees Celsius is like Eliminate. So the deeper you go into the crust, like you're going to get different index minerals that form and that's right here, the amphibolite that I've got here, it actually has garnets. And geologists can use this and, and can tell you like roughly about, okay, I'm looking at the mineralogy of this enhanced specimen, but also if I put it under a microscope and make a thin section out of it, I can see that the garnets show that there's like, you know, evidence of other minerals in there too. So it's it's been at temperatures, you know, up to 600, 550 degrees Celsius, sometimes even higher, sometimes lower. And you're just like, right, okay, that's good. You can see the mineral alignment as well. This is from the Isle of Mull, 
which is quite cool. Like, um, it's one of my favourite Infobites. And this one's from the Scooby Dykes, like, up in the Northwest Highlands that are part of the big Lucy and Nice complex, the oldest rocks in Scotland. This is probably... I can't remember if it's 2.7 or 1.7 million years old. I've just went blank to be honest, I need to look into that. The Scooby Dykes are um, this age, um, so around that age, sorry. So what was this before? This was a mafic igneous rock before, right? It means that it was basaltic in composition. Could it either have been a gabbro before or it could have been like a basil, right? And basil, we've spoken about basil before. That was a certain Greek rock. This is the freshest basil I have, it, although it's quite uh, vesicular. It's got a lot of vesicles in it. It's probably more a scoria. Like, well, I've seen it erupt out of the ground though, but aye. Like, when you have a mafic igneous rock that forms like as either a dike or a sill, and let's just go over what they are again or an intrusive, an extrusive igneous rock. When these are buried at depth within that mountain belt, belt within that, uh, that convergent plate boundary, they can change over time. So here's a volcano, right? This is a plug. Magma chambers down here, right? Sometimes you get cells that are horizontal. Sometimes you get dikes. Sometimes they're all over the place. They've just intruded into this crust, like, and they're going everywhere, you know, like absolutely everywhere, bonkers. Um, and also that crystallizes over time. The bigger crystals in the intrusive igneous rock, the magma chamber, the pluton, right? And finer crystals, you know, in your intrusive igneous rocks in your lab as it spew out the surface, right? Up on lava. Now this is like with the garnets in it, like that's found on mull and it's found as sills. So it's like in line with the bedding of like the other, and dikes as well actually. It's in line with the, some of the bedding that you can see, like the foliations and it's been foliated as well, like in amongst like some of those foliations of like your schists and stuff that have formed. And what's happened to it is it's underwent high temperatures and high pressures, or medium temperatures to high temperatures and high pressures. It's probably been sitting in the crust in that mountain belt, like uh, during the Caledonian Orogeny, which was a big mountain building event in Scotland that happened between uh, around 450 million years, let's just say that, between 390 and 450, right? when you had the two plates collide and you had Avalonia meet Laurentia. We were on Laurentia. England was at Avalonia. We had an old ocean between us. That ocean shut, known as the Iapetus Ocean. As it shut and the plates subducted underneath, you had the continental collision of these two continents, Avalonia and Laurentia, Scotland and England. And as that happened, like it's caused all this metamorphism that we see in the Highlands. So now on Mull, we can see the garnets in it, and they're absolutely stunning, beautiful to look at. So we find a lot of amphibolite up there across the highlands, the north, northern highlands terrain, the also central highlands terrain, which are two separate terrains, geological terrains in Scotland that came together during this and amalgamated together. They've been metamorphosed, changed over geological time, and turned into amphibolites from probably basaltic in composition and dolerite as well. Now the Scooby and Nices are a different story. They are a lot older. They're related to another mountain building event that happened back in the day during, oh goodness me, I don't even know what period of time that was, Archean. And again, similar process, mountain building event, and they've been metamorphosed a few times as well. So when you get a rock that's been metamorphosed a few times, it's been, you call it polymetamorphosed. It's just, it just means that it's been metamorphosed over and over again, <laughs> folded, buckled, fucked up basically, apologies for swearing, I know that some people don't like swearing but that's why I say that my videos aren't actually made for kids, I usually click the button, because <laughs> um, I do swear a lot, um, and I, that's really your amphibolite, you get different fashions as well associated with different like 
kinds of metamorphism, especially when it comes to regional metamorphism. And when I'm talking about amphibolite and amphibolite fasces, it does get really complicated though. Like there's different sequences and stuff. So you've got like, you know, your green shift fasces, your amphibolite fasces, your granulite fasces, and then your migmatites and stuff form usually associated with nice. So yeah, it's a very beautiful, interesting, lovely wee walk to look at. Um, one of my favourites. And I love it when you come across it in the Highlands, it's absolutely stunning. So I hope you enjoyed this week's Rock of the Week. And brilliant, we'll move on. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, driver! Come on. <laughs>